Here is another case. You can see it's a CT of the lung. There's the spine. There's the canal for the spinal cord. Here are some ribs of thoracic cavity. Here's the sternum. Here's the scapula. And this may be the technique they call pulmonary windows in which they turn down the uh, air density of the lung so it's practically zero. And therefore, they might be able to see some uh, tumor better. And this is a tumor, isn't it? It's involving the mediastinum. At this point, you don't know if it's really totally within the lungs or both in the lungs and mediastinum, but these look like they may be uh, large mediastinal lymph nodes or tumor uh, in this area. It's definitely not part of normal heart or lung appearances. And let's take another x-ray uh, CT a little bit further down in the body, in the abdomen. And uh, here's something that is going to be very subtle. What it's going to be is a liver, as you could see, maybe part of a kidney here and here maybe an aorta here, probably some bowel here, posterior spinal muscles here. Look at here, and 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 here for sure. And there may be even some more subtle areas. This is a liver that has a lot of subtle, not drastic, but uh, areas of decreased CT. This is a, a classical metastatic liver. Let's look at some slides now. Here's a slide of a uh, lung from that same patient. And you could see some bronchial cartilage. You could see some generally compressed or infiltrated lung. It might be worse along here than it is here. There may be a relatively normal lung here, but there is definitely something seriously wrong with the lung. It also appears to be in uh, the bronchial integrity appears to be invaded by something as well. So where would you like to blow up first? How about if we take this area? We'll center it, we'll blow it up, and we'll see something which by now should be quite uh, obvious to you. We could see diffusely infiltrative tumor cells. We could see that the cells uh, do not have any semblance of looking like they want to make glands. We see no evidence whatsoever for keratinization or spindly squamous type cells. This is another classical oat cell in which you have small tumor cells, like they're all throughout here, minimal cytoplasm, and that's why they look so blue and they look so lymphoid. And I'm just going to go high power through random areas of the lung here because I want to demonstrate something else. Besides the fact that we can see that probably this represents here and here and here and here, little anthracotic pigment within macrophages. It's obvious that these are tumor cells again, but look at these tumor cells. They're necrotic tumor cells. Do you see how good and sharp the differentiation is here between tumor nuclei and their minimal cytoplasm? Well, look, it's all kind of a granular crud here, and some of these nuclei look like they're either poorly visible or all gone. This is necrosis. Oat cell carcinomas grow so fast that they frequently are necrotic, in which you could just see ghosts of nuclei. That's what they call the ghosting effect. Uh, is there anything else we would like to see in this case? Well, let's see. Let's go to another slide. Looks like we have some more lung out here. Even from this power, you could tell that basically the upper half or third of the field is necrotic not much by way of delineation of cellular structures, although some are. And here at the bottom, it's not as necrotic. I'll center in on that area. I'll blow it up. And I will prove to you uh, once again that we have uh, classical oat cells here. Perhaps a little more necrotic here, but these are the classical appearance of small cells of small cell carcinoma, a.k.a. oat cells. 
uh, relatively small cells, no glandular formation, a very minimal cytoplasm, very densely staining. You don't see many nucleoli here. The whole nucleus looks as dense as a nucleolus. This is uh, small cell carcinoma, and thank you once again very much.